Not very simple, very easy to put together, um, yet very, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with this and you can really scale do what you want with it to learn about, especially if it's like an introductory for it, to learn about robots. It's great, great little kit. I highly recommend it. And the components of a good caliber, good grade. Um, everything fit there very well. There was no confusion. In fact, I really didn't have to use the manual, but I'm using the manual just to keep it on, uh, keep it consistent with the verse of this tutorial and this review. And uh, yeah, so let's continue. So now, install the line sensor wires. Okay. So the line sensor wires, let's go ahead and open up our bag of goodies. I'm going to separate now before I continue some of the components that we've used. Looks like they give us extra wheels. And uh, we have two extra screws right now. Uh, I can see that they're going to be using that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the, uh, one of the mystery bags here. It has the components. I'm just going to kind of spill this out onto my table. So you can see what it has. So. These are the sensors that we're installing. These two here. I'm going to set aside. These are the actual cables that they're asking to install in step nine. And the, these are jumper cables we're going to need later on. These are, we have some LEDs, infrareds. And we'll find out all about these components just in a bit. I'm not going to get to those just yet. So let me separate those for now. Now, step nine, we have to install these. So basically it says, carefully feed each 10 inch three pin extension cable through the center chassis slot. So for this we're going to have to turn it upside down, right there, and there's a slot right there in the middle. So these are pretty big and only one of these fits through at a time. Now I'm going to make the assumption that they're going to go through to the back. I'm going to feed it through and feed it to the back. Simply because that's where all the cables are going. So these are going to be used to connect to the line sensors in step 10. So there we go. Now fed them in. We have the two wires sticking out. And we have to make sure we know which ones they are because they're stuck here. And they're definitely not the servos. Now, crucial that when you start connecting things that you do not get wrong things uh, to the wrong ports on board. I've seen in the past, done many times, and you've won you failed projects or confusion or fried boards or messed up components, and all of which you do not want. So, having said that, continue on to step 10, which is install the QTI line sensors. So, I'm going to go ahead and open one of these up. Now, let's see, no, I don't know, that was going to be my razor, don't get it. Okay, there's one. Second one. So according to this, these are going to mount right here. Now these were left dangling from before in a previous step. Well, right now this is where we're going to use them. Now each one of these sensors is going to be used to follow. Uh, I'm assuming a line on the floor, or to know when you cross over the edge of the ring. Now it appears, actually, from the picture, this is how we're going to be mounting these, like so. Make sure that you're mounting it with the headers facing upwards like this. Do not mount it upside down like this because otherwise the sensor will not work because it's not looking at anything. You have to mount them up. And it just so happens that we have more screws left over and those are the ones we're going to use to these here. And you can choose the screwdriver right off the bat or you can go ahead and mount it with your hand. Either one is fine. Um, Remember, you're screwing this in directly to the board, so do not tighten it too much. You don't want to break the actual sensor. My 
hands were small enough I could screw this in away. But also make sure that these are parallel to the scoop in front or the shovel, however you want to refer to. I'm assuming they don't have to be perfect, but it's always nice to have it exactly the same. Take your time building the robots. Never try to hurry. Um, there is no rush. You're not going to get anything out of it. And uh, you'll get to understand completely what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do. Uh, well, it looks like this one here. Alright. So. What's crucial to know is how you're going to plug these in now. So as you can see, the sensors are mounted now. How are we going to plug them in? So, if we look here at the sensors, now I can't see what we have a B, R, W. B, R, and W. Now, a picture. Okay, so I see what they're doing here. They color coordinated. So most times, what happens is when you sensor, they'll actually label it. So they'll say something like VCC, GND, and signal, or something like that. In this case, they basically said, I'm going to color coordinate it. It makes it even easier. So B, R, and W actually stand for black, red, and white. So that makes it straightforward to wire this in. And I'm going to go ahead and get the second one here. And that was reversed. So let's plug that one in. Boom. And we are good to go. Now we're plugged in. So what I'm going to do, this is something that's not in the actual document, but I'm going to do it for my own sake. I'm going to pull one of these. And I'm pulling that one. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to twist the end of this so I know that this one belongs to this sensor on this side here. So I just basically put a little knot in so I know. And that's going to help me keep track of it. In fact, since we're at it, well, no, I can do that one there too, so let me do it anyway. I'm going to take the server on the same side and give it a little twist as well. Now I know that these two belong on one side and the other two belong on the other. So there we have it. The two twists there, no twists here, and we know what they belong to. Again, it's very important you keep track of all of where everything gets plugged into. You do want to fry it. So, we're ready on that sense. We've almost completed the construction of this. And actually what it says to do now is step one to make the connection. So, that's I'm going to end it off here. I'm going to go on to the part where we're actually working on the PCB and plugging it in. That concludes us building all the mechanics of the actual Sumo bot. As you can see, did not take much time at, at all, and it was very simple together. The device is really nice, very simple, very straightforward. Um, I recommend for anybody, you know, 10 and up actually should be able to do construction. Now, I don't know what they're going to be able to do most time to working with the PCB. Let's see what, uh, what kind of hurdles we face and what kind of things we run into.